Alright, moving on. Um, let's see. Oh, the ten tribes being native. Oh, my bad. Alright, let me uh, read up a little bit. Going to page 32. It says, in one man's version, these curious beings were thought to practice the rites of ancient Israel. This is talking about the Native Americans in, in America, so-called. Others reported that the Indians they had met spoke a language that evoked the rhythmic, rhythmical sounds of Welsh. One of these mysterious tribes, so the story goes, even cherished a printed Bible. All right. Now, I'm going to read something that goes to show you all the natives of this country. Because a lot of these motherfuckers that say that the Hispanics are not Israel... They'll, they'll acknowledge that the ancestors, that the natives were Israel. So, so reading forward, it says, 14 years later, a French explorer known to make scru scrupulous observations, the Sierra de la Verendry, reached an unusual Missouri River tribe, the Mandan. The Mandan were, uh, based on some history that I've read, descendants of the tribe of Dan. You know, because what, 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 what I would say according to scripture is that the tribe of Dan mixed in with the ten tribes. You know, because you got, you know, them here in Missouri as, as natives. You know what I mean? But it says, he was certain that this light-skinned people who lived in villages laid out with streets and squares showed at least a trace of European ancestry. He thought he heard the names of Jesus and Mary spoken and the men he left behind to study the Mandan language found affinities with the dialect of Brittany, a language with words bearing a resemblance to Welsh. Elders, uh, reading, on, uh, reading on, elders of the tribe, according to the captain, said that their ancestors had come from a foreign country to the coast of Florida, and then the Spaniards had driven them towards the west. All right. Reading forward. Oh, um, other books, because remember, we just re we read a little bit earlier about America B.C. You know, this that's one book that I'm going to go into, Lord willing. No such precise location has been marked out as the landing place for the ten lost tribes of Israel, but as the authors of one volume about early travelers and seafarers had pointed out with some exasperation, their presumed migrations crisscrossed the globe, virtually all the peoples of the earth, they write, have been identified at one time or another with the vanished descendants of the tribes that rebelled against the rule of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Alright, so reading on, it says, He told of a Spanish jeweler, traveler, Antonio de Montezinos, whose Indian guide on a South American trip greeted him with Shema Israel, or here or Israel. Alright, now reading on, according to Adair, now, now we're talking about James Adair, the Indian phrase for dead or lost is elet uh, kan kanecha, also meant gone to Canaan. And the word for winter, Korah, was borrowed unchanged from the Hebrew. He reported that when the Indians meet at night to gladden and unite their hearts before Yohiwa, Yahweh, they sing over and over the Hebrew word for Messiah, Mashiach. The, the, the book didn't say Mashiach. It just said the Hebrew word for Messiah. I'm just telling you the word is Mashiach. He exhausted his fortune and perhaps his life in attempting to prove that the lost tribes of Israel were the ancestors of the Indians in Mexico. Nearly half of Adair's books, book was reprinted by the passionately convinced Kingsborough. Okay. Now, another, another thing that is similar from the so-called Hispanics to the so-called Negroes, is their history was, was whitewashed. Check this out. It is only after the Spanish conquest that Quetzalcoatl is depicted as having white skin, and, and then only in accounts proved, provided by the Spaniards themselves. Only the, only the Spaniards and the Europeans had Quetzalcoatl as being so-called white. In local Aztec art, he is usually depicted as a feathered serpent or as a human wearing a mask or shown to have a black face, sometimes with yellow stripes and a red mouth. Similarly, the same way, the Peruvian creator god Viracocha was not revered by the Indians as a man from another race. 
Wow. <laughs> Shows you the so-called white man is, is the damn devil the Bible speaks of. All right, then it goes into a little bit of this bullshit ass, um, you know, just a lot of bullshit. But uh, let me see. There's something here that goes into, because you know these these fucking um, Bible bashers, you know, like Shaka Akmos and all these motherfuckers, they swear by. Uh, by radiocarbon dating, which this book goes into showing how that shit is not exact. So it says, 20th century technological wizardry notwithstanding, scientists still have no single dating method that covers all human history. The standard dating technique employed by archaeologists, however, is radiocarbon dating. Carbon-14, a radioactive element absorbed by all living things, through the food chain, begins to decay as soon as the organism dies. Point made. You know what I'm saying? Now, reading forward, going into the Omex. Some years later, the head, you know, Omex heads, came to the attention of a Mexican archaeologist, Jose Melgar E. Serrano, who in 1869 reported on it in a scientific journal as the first published account of any Omex find from that area of Mexico, Mexico. This was a landmark step, although the conclusions Melgar drew were questionable. As a work of art, he wrote, it is without exaggeration that a, a magnificent sculpture, but what astonished me was the Ethiopic type represented. Ethiopic means burnt faced. So it says, I reflect that there had undoubtedly been Negroes in this country. What more can I say? <laughs> what, 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 what more can we really say? Now, going back into the Mayans, again, you know, I, um, I'm not going to say I claim, but I, I, would, I would say I believe, based on my, my readings, that, uh, that the so-called... Damn, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. But anyway, that the so-called uh, Mayans... Um, they were a mixture of Issachar and the uh, and Zebulun. You know, um, again, don't get caught up in their names here in America. Remember, they have tribes. You know, you gotta you gotta think about it like the Medo Persian Empire. It was two nations that that had a joint rulership. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, this chapter is called the Magnificent Maya. The true dimensions of Maya civilization, however, were, were lost upon most Spaniards who in haste to conquer and convert failed to comprehend what lay before them. So in other words, the Spaniards didn't know how great a people they were conquering. Not until the 19th century did the extent and, and grandeur of the Maya culture begin to be fully explored and publicized, awakening a quickly captivated world to the fact that a high civilization on the order of ancient Egypt had flourished for nearly 1,000 years in the New World. The territory the Maya inhabited, some 125,000 square miles, encompasses the present-day countries, listen closely, of western Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Belize, and the Mexican stat states of Tabasco and Chiapas, to the west as well, as the entire Yucatan Peninsula, which is bordered by the Gulf and Caribbean coasts. All right, reading on. Yet after some 12 centuries of steady occupation of their land, something happened in the world of the Maya, and the Maya civilization in the lowlands came to a precipitous end. All buildings stopped, and the center after center was deserted to be reclaimed by the creeping jungle. So, so it, it's kind of a mystery how... Mayan civilization fell. They weren't, you know, just automatically eradicated by the Spaniards. The people were, but, you know, the, the cities and everything, they, they, they had a collapse, which this history book doesn't particularly go into. You know, kind of leaves it as a mystery. Reading on, uh, this goes into the time. Probably no other peoples except perhaps the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians had been so preoccupied with time as the Maya. Now, when you deal with time and knowledge of the sun, moon, and the stars, 
that could be a gift and a curse. You know, case in point, you know, the, the Babylonians and the, and the Egyptians, you know, they took that science and made it into, um, what's that called? Uh, astronomy and astrology and shit and, and worshiping the sun, moon, and stars. The tribe of Issachar, which, like I said, was probably, in my opinion, a good portion of the Mayan culture. Um, the tribe of Issachar was a uh, what the hell is the word I'm looking for? The tribe of Issachar had a, a knowledge of the times, you know, to know, you know, how and when to keep holy days. Now. We believe in going to the scriptures that go into it. So it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their commandment. All right? And then right after that, it goes into the, book, the tribe of Zebulon, by the way. So that, that's, I don't think that's no mystery. The uh, Issachar and Zebulon had a certain bond. You know, but uh, going back into this book, the Maya were so obsessed with genealogy and legitimate descent from the past that they proclaimed that the rituals and actions of their lords were exactly the same as those of their gods, past, present, and future. By observation with the naked eye and careful notation over hundreds of years, the unknown generations of patient Maya astronomers, and perhaps the Olmec before them, worked out a complex series of calendars including the cycle and the cycle of the moon and the sequences of 260 365 and 360 days the 360 day year which was made up of 12 months of 20 days each was used in a system called the long count all right um they don't go into nothing really major after that but uh oh yeah one last thing I wanted to go into was was uh, I saw I showed not showed I saw a piece of art here, you know because you figure these people came to the Americas, the so-called Americas. This book says that they were there by 400 BC, and other things other things show 600 BC. So you know that they were there before Yahweh was born. So they predated. Uh, Yahweh I like I know you you uh you Hamitic scholars like to use the word predates a lot you know but um here we go look at this this is a, a man carrying a cross now the cross was a was a Roman torture method or or or, or method to kill people so Slot. So what what is a um an Aztec actually? That was an Aztec depicted carrying a cross for. You know what I'm saying? So it goes to show they knew about crucif crucifixion. You know, but with that, you know, I just wanted to bring that out. Lord willing there's gonna be more series, you know what I'm saying, you know, bringing out the so called Hispanics and Native Americans are, are part of the children of Israel. You know, but with that, I want to say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, brothers, throughout the four corners of the earth, teaching the truth and righteousness and sincerity. To you, Israelite foreigners, come back home to the truth. To those that passed away serving the Lord, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall arise first. Shalom.